السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد سورة الكهف الكهف in English is the cave it's a cave that is the meaning of kahf and obviously this surah it has been named al kahf because of the story of those young people who take refuge in the ka- in the in the kahf in the cave and that is what happens with most of the names of the surahs the chapters of the quran they're mostly named after a very important theme or story which happens in that um, surah. So you find Surah Al-Baqarah is named Al-Baqarah after the, the story of the, of the Baqarah, the cow with Banu Israel. Surah Al-Ma'idah is named Al-Ma'idah because of the story of the Ma'idah with Banu Israel, with Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salatu salam and other stories as such, or other surahs as such. And the names of the surahs, were they written by the scholars, or were they also tawqifiyya, meaning they are also wahi? Yes, they are wahi. The names of the surahs also, they were not just written at a later period of time. Rather, it is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was still alive, who informed us of these names of these surahs. Surah Al-Kahf, it has 110 verses, ayat, 110 ayat. And generally speaking, the maqasid, the main themes and the intended goals of this surah, and this is important to understand, and obviously, Khwani, we are studying Surah Al-Kahf because of how important it is. Uh, it is very important such that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the famous ahadith reported by the Sunan, in the Sunan, the four Sunan, and uh, Musnad of Ahmad and other books, uh, even though some of the scholars, they differed in some of the um, ahadith regarding Surah Al-Kahf, but in generally, they are acceptable ahadith on the excellence of reading Surah Al-Kahf every Friday. Every Friday. Now, that should tell you a lot that we are encouraged to read this Surah every week on the best day of the week. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not say on Wednesday or Tuesday or uh, Friday. On the best day of the week, you're reading this surah. It's because of the great meanings and the great themes and intended goals and teachings which are in this surah. So anyone who knows that, I think we'll all agree. uh, Anyone who understands that will say, okay, then let us put some time into looking at what this surah really teaches us. That every week we have to be uh, revising because after you know something, when you go through it again, it's called what? It's revision now. It's revision. But how can you do revision if you cannot grasp the actual understanding of the thing? Huh? You can't. So that is the reason why we are here, Ikhwani. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in these sittings of ours and this time we spend here. The great themes of Surah Al-Kahf. Number one. And this is shown in the beginning and the end of the surah. It is the correct aqidah. And this is the message of the Quran. To correct the aqidah, the belief, what the human being is supposed to believe. So you find this in the beginning and the end of Surah Al-Kahf. And even in the middle parts, it comes. 
But it comes through point number two, stories. Allah mentions stories in this surah. In fact, there's four great stories. It's one of the few surah, surahs where you have more than one story. Usually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions one story in a surah uh, to teach us so we can take example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ We narrate to you the best stories. These are not stories of past time. These are not stories of fantasy. No, these are stories, reality of people, human beings like us, who lived in this world and they went away from this world. Allah, he brings them to us because they are befitting, because they are very important for us to read learn, study, and take example. There's four stories in this surah. The first of which is, which, which story? Ashabul Kahf. The people of the cave. And I would not love to call them people, I'll call them like Allah called them. And this is very important for the young people here like myself. I'm not old by the way. Innahum fityatun, Allah says, Allahu Akbar. That's why this story is very important, Allah, for the young man of Islam. Innahum fityatun. The young people who took refuge in the cave. Those are the people of the cave. That's the first story. A second story which comes is Sahibul Jannatan or Sahibul Jannatain Afwan. The two friends whom each of them had a garden or a farm, whatever you want to call it. The debate and the conversation they had, the dialogue they had. And if you contemplate and you think about it, we'll come, we're going to come to it. You'll see that it happens almost every day in our lives. When someone who's a good practicing Muslim meets someone who's not such a good practicing Muslim and Allah has given him a lot of wealth, it's almost the same dialogue. And the story, the third story which comes in Surah Al-Kahf is the famous story of Musa alayhi salam and Khadr, who is also called Khidr. But his rightful, his rightful name is Khadr. That's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam pronounced it in the hadith. Musa and Khadr is such an amazing story. Especially if you understand it also through the sunnah. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he explained more details and that is the purpose of the Sunnah to explain the Quran. Like Khadr, this name is not mentioned in Al Kahf, or is it mentioned? Huh? The name Khadr, is it mentioned in Surah Al Kahf? No. How does Allah address this person? What does Allah call him? Abdan min ibadina. A slave from our slaves, Abd. Don't forget that name, that title, that word in Arabic. Don't forget it, okay? That's the third story. The fourth story is the story of Dhul Qarnayn. Dhul Qarnayn, amazing. I don't know his name in English. He's not Alexander the Great, no. Huh? Allahu A'lam. I don't know. He's, what is the name? Korsh. Pajian. It doesn't matter. But Allah said, Dhul Qarnayn. I'm going to say Dhul Qarnayn. The story of Dhul Qarnayn, which ends Surah Al Kahf. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us again of what the Muslim is supposed to believe. These are four stories which come in this surah. All of them teaching us what we as Muslims every week are supposed to learn. The personalities a Muslim has to have and follow. Number three from the themes of this surah is reminding us of the reality of this worldly life and where we are going. This features a lot. The reality of this worldly life, which you call the dunya in Arabic and also in Urdu. And where you're going, and that is called the Akhirah. Jazakallah khairan. This surah, it reminds you a lot. 
of these things. And that is something everybody needs because if you don't get reminded, Ikhwani, and I think everybody can speak for himself, when you don't get reminded, especially when you live in a society which is all of, uh, uh, mostly of ma'asiyah and staying away from the good things, it's easy for you to get distracted and to go astray. It's easy. You need to be reminded. So these are some of the main themes of this surah. Now this surah is so powerful in the meanings it has. It is so powerful that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi says in Sahih Muslim, when the Dajjal appears, and there's no fitna greater than the fitna of the Dajjal, such that no prophet came since Nuh alayhi salam, except that he warned his people of the Dajjal. Even though they knew he's not going to come in their time, he's going to come at the end of times. But every prophet warned his people of the Dajjal. The greatest fitna human beings will suffer for those who will be at that time when he appears. The Prophet says in Sahih Muslim, and when the Dajjal comes to one of you, then read, read to him the opening of Surah Al Kahf, he won't harm you. Now today for us to protect ourselves, you're thinking of bodyguards, you know, six feet eight, 200 pounds with two Glocks and, uh, and, uh, and uh, AK-47, another one carrying an M16 or uh, AR-15 rifle and, you know, with a bulletproof car. And you're thinking that, that's how I protect myself from the Dajjal. I'll be in a um, 20 meter deep bunker and nobody can come there with all these encrypted passwords and Read on him Surah Al-Kahf. A'udhu Billah. Min dajjal Subhanallah. How powerful is this Surah? It is powerful that the Dajjal cannot come and harm you. Subhanallah. That is why it's very important, Yahwani, for all of us to memorize the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf. And also, the last 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf. Because the Hadith of Abu Darda it came in two parts or two rewires. One of them says the one who reads and memorizes the first 10 verses, first uh, 10 verses of Surah Al Kahf, the Dajjal will not harm him. He'll be protected from the Dajjal. The other narration, also in Sahih Muslim, it says the last 10 verses. Ikhwani and Akhawat, if there's this sisters uh, listening, the reality is if you read this surah every Friday, you don't even have to put an effort to memorize it. You are going to memorize it naturally. You know that, right? Naturally, you are going to memorize it if you really read it every Friday. Because by now, you're 25, you're 40, you're 45, you're 65, maybe some of you, past retirement age. Let's say you started practicing Islam when you are 20. Or 25. Let's say 35. 10 years ago. How many Fridays do you have in 10 years? It's 52 weeks a year. That's 520 weeks. You have read this surah 520 times. Only Fridays. Only Fridays. Rather than the time you read it every week because you have to finish the Quran. And you'll find it so easy to memorize, by the way. It's very easy to memorize, Surah al -Kahf. So this is a surah which is very important. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us understand it so we can know what we are reading when we read it and then most importantly, Khwani, the Quran is for action. So we can practice what Allah wants us to practice. Now, for those of you who have come for the other classes of tafsir we're doing or the other tafsir we've been doing, usually we speak generally about the ayat the meaning of them, and then we go verse by verse, word by word, what does it mean? So the general meaning, and then we talk about the words and the verses, what they mean specifically. And of course then, what are the lessons we get, practical lessons. And the way of explaining the Quran is explaining the Quran by the Quran. The Quran, it explains itself. It explains itself, sorry. The Quran, it explains itself. Allah called the Quran Mathani. Mathani means it repeats itself. So you'll find this part explains this part and this part explains this part. 
And after that, we explain the Quran with the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, meaning the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, whether verbally or practically. Because that was the job of the Messenger, Allah sent him to explain the Quran. And after that, we take from the greatest scholars of Islam who understood the Quran more than anyone else, and those are the companions, the Ashab al Kiram. And this is what we follow in our tafsir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He begins this surah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, just like all the other surahs, except surah to At Tawbah. Allah says, Alhamdulillah, and today we'll be discussing these five, six, uh, uh, first five, six verses. Alhamdulillah, Alladhi Anzala Ala Abdihi Al Kitab, Walam Yajal Lahu Iwaja, Qayyiman, Liyundira Baksan Shadida Milla Dunhu, Uyubashir Al Mu'minin Al Ladina Amaluna Solihati, Anna Lahum, Ajiran Hassana, Makithina Fihi Abada, ويُنذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا. Today we will discuss that because that is one meaning. Are those five or six? Five. This first five. Verses of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He praises Himself and He praises the book which He sent to His Abd. Remember, I told you, remember that word, don't forget it. All these first five verses are about that. Allah is talking about Himself and the Quran. Wadah, is that clear? What are these first five verses talking about? About Allah and the, the Quran. This is what this first, first, uh, these first five verses are talking about. Alhamdulillah. I'm sure in the translation we have, I'm going to translate like I say generally, then we'll explain. All perfect praise belongs to Allah. Alladhi, the one who anzal al kitab ala abdihi, he revealed the book to his slave servant. Walam yaj'al lahu iwaja, and he made not in that book any crookedness. Qayyiman, it is upright, straightforward. Liyunthira, to warn, to warn who? Ba'san shadidan min ladunhu, to warn of a severe punishment from him. To warn of a severe punishment from him. And to give glad tidings, good news. To who? Alladheena yamaluna salihat. For those who do good actions. What will they have? Anna lahum, that they will have for them. Ajran, a reward. Hasana, a reward which is good. Hasana, you can also say beautiful. Ma kithina fihi bada abada, they will stay therein, meaning in that good reward, abada forever. And then Allah says again, wa yunzir alladhina, and to also warn, to warn again. Who alladhina? Qalu those who said, ittakhad Allah walada, Allah has a son or a child. To warn them. Allah then describes these people. And their statement that Allah has a child. مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ They have no certain knowledge concerning this issue. وَلَا لِآبَائِهِمْ Neither their forefathers who they are following. In fact, this statement is so evil. كَبُرَتْ كَلِمَةً How greatly evil is this statement. تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِمْ Coming from their, state, from their mouths. إِنْ يَقُولُونَ They are only saying إِلَّا except Kadiba lies. So Allah says in these first five verses, Allah first praises Himself. Allah praises Himself. 
Allah begins this surah by saying Alhamdulillah. And this statement is so famous, all of us we know it. Lakin we have not learnt about it. Alhamdulillah. Allah praises himself. Why is Allah praising himself? Huh? Because Allah deserves to be praised. That is number one. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like other parts of the Quran, Allah mentions specific reason of why he is praising himself. Allah says, Alhamdulillah, all perfect praise belongs to Allah. Lam, this lam of lillah, alhamdulillah, it is called lamul jins. In English you say, I don't know how you'll say it in English. Yani yufidul istighraq. The denotion of it is encompassing. Alhamdulillah, so when you say perfect, all perfect praise, lillah, that's why we have all. When people translate in English, they say what? All perfect praise. That all is from the lamb in Arabic. Not just perfect praises for Allah. When you say perfect praises for Allah, that leaves the doors open saying what? There might be others who also have perfect praise. It says all the perfect praise is only for Allah. That is the meaning of Alhamdulillah. All the perfect praise is only for Allah. All of it. Why is Allah very good exclusively? Why is Allah praising himself here? Allah says, Alladhi, because he is Allah who did what? Anzala ala abdihi kitab He revealed to his abd, his servant, a book. What kind of a book is this? وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجَ In a book, a book which, in which there is no contradiction, عِوَجَ عِوَجَ is a contradiction, crookedness. قَيِّمًا A book which is upright. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises himself, ya akhwani, for revealing this book to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first. And of course it was not revealed to him alone. It was revealed to him for him to do what? To teach humanity. So if Allah praises himself for revealing this book, how are we supposed to thank Allah for this? Or maybe the question which should be asked is, are we thanking Allah for this great thing which he praised himself for? Are we thanking Allah for this Quran? Everybody should ask himself that. Allah praises himself for revealing this book. Because this is the greatest favor you have, that Allah sent a messenger with this book. And that is why today we discussed in the khutbah. Allah says, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Say to them, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ By the favor of Allah, وَرَحْمَتِهِ and his mercy, by those two things, they should be happy and proud. It is better than what they gather of the world. What are those two things? The favor of Allah is the Quran. And His mercy is Islam. And that is what we discussed today in the khutbah. For those of you who are not here today in the khutbah, I sincerely ask you to go and find the khutbah of today and listen. Because it is extremely important. Be proud of who you are as a Muslim. Allah says you should be happy that Allah gave you his favor, the Quran, and Allah gave you Islam. When was the last time you were happy to be Muslim? We said, Alhamdulillah, that I have the Quran. When was the last time we said that? It's such a great thing that Allah praises himself, Allahu Akbar. Not just a book. There's no crookedness in this book. Qayyiman, it is upright. Perfect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises himself for revealing this book. And then Allah says to us, what is the message of this book? لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا مِنْ لَدُنْهُ So that he can give a severe warning of a punishment from him. The Quran, it came with a severe warning. For who? 
For who? Huh? For who? For those who refuse the Quran. For those who refuse the Quran, Allah has sent a severe warning. And that is what the Quran is about. When you read the Quran, you'll see that. Allah speaks of the hellfire, and then Allah also says what? وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And to give good news. لِيُنذِرَ الْإِنذَارَ الْإِنذَارَ Is what? It's a khabar, it's an information or a, or a, or a news of what? Of warning. Of something bad. That is in there. That is why the Prophet وسلم, from his names is Bashiran wa Nadira. Bashir, he gives good news. Wa yubashir al mu'minin. And also he is Nadir. He gives warning. If you turn away, then there's the hellfire. And if you accept Islam, there is Jannah and Maradatillah, the pledge of Allah. It gives a warning and it gives good news. This is what the Quran is about. This is what the Quran is about. And this is what these first five surahs, first five verses are talking about. But before I continue, Khwani, we go back to the meaning of Alhamdulillah. This is the greatest, one of the greatest statements you can ever make as a Muslim. We take it lightly because we hear it every day, we say it every day. But when it comes from the heart, it's one of the greatest things you can ever do. You can ever do. If you want to know how important this statement is, you have to know its meaning. Hamd, hamd, in Arabic language. It comes from the root word hamida yahmud, to praise someone, to praise someone. It is to praise someone for something he has. To praise someone for something he has. It is the opposite of them. Them to dispraise, to dispraise someone, to speak badly of him. That is why someone who has good qualities, that he is praiseworthy. You say in English he is praiseworthy. In Arabic you say what? Huh? It's very good. You say Muhammad. All of you know that name? Huh? The most common name in the world. Almost a billion people maybe called Muhammad. Especially our Pakistani, Bangladeshi, Indian brothers. There has to be Muhammad something, Muhammad something, Muhammad something, Muhammad something. Right? You know, the mean, that's the meaning of Muhammad. The one who has good characters is praiseworthy. Muhammad, Mahmudan. It comes from that root word, Hamid. It's someone who has good qualities. That's what it means. That is why the kuffar of Quraysh, when they would want to attack the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would not call him Muhammad, they would call him what? They'll say Muthammam, the opposite, the one who's dispraised. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most perfect character of human beings, he would act like that's not him they're talking about. He would say, these people, they call me Muthammam, Muthammam, and that's not my name, I am Muhammad. Can you imagine that? Some of us, if someone called you a bad name, then oh, World War Three, not just him and his tribe also. And when you write long poetry to attack them and his mom and his mom's mom and all of them, right? No, he'll act like he, he doesn't even harm him. And they're not talking about me. I'm Muhammad. They're speaking about somebody else's Muhammad. That is the linguistic meaning of the word Hamd. For Allah, though, Subhanahu wa Taala, and Islamical, when we say Alhamdulillah, now, what does it mean? It is to praise Allah, the one who is deserving of all praise. Why? Because he has the most beautiful names and perfect attributes and because he is the one who has given the favors which everybody has. That is the meaning of Alhamdulillah. I will repeat. When you say Alhamdulillah, you are saying, I am praising Allah, the one who deserves all kind of praise. 
Why? Because Allah has the most perfect names and attributes. All the perfect qualities and characteristics are His. And He has no imperfect or evil deficiencies or characteristics. And all favors and blessings, ni'am, everything which is in this world, yours or anybody else, it comes from Him. That is why Allah, from His names, He is what? Al-Hamid. And that is one of the greatest names of Allah. That is why you say it in every salah, in the end of your tashahud. Innahu, innaka hamidun majid. Because you Allah, you are Al-Hamid. Those two names of Allah, Al-Hamid and Al-Majid, they comprise all the other names and attributes of Allah. Allah is Al-Hamid. He is the one who deserves perfect praise. For what? Because he is the one who is the most perfect in everything. And he is the one who has given you and he is the one whose every favor comes from him. That is why Alhamd can only be for him. Alhamd, perfect praise is only for Allah. Now for those who know a bit of Arabic, what is the difference between Hamd and Madh? Madh, when you translate it in English, you also say to praise. Huh? Madh to praise someone, it only comes when someone does something. فَتَمْدَحُهُ بِفِعْلِهِ You praise him for something he did. مَدْح مَا دَاحَ مَدْح It is to praise someone for something he did. You understand? But hamd, Allah deserves hamd, not madh. Because Allah, even if he didn't do anything for you, he is still the most perfect, who all favors and blessings come from him. So he is al-hamid. He is al-hamid. You understand? Is that clear? Madh is for something someone does. Someone did a favor for you, say madh. Madhahu. For something he does. Like in Alhamd is for him himself. He doesn't have to do anything. What is the difference between Alhamd and Shukr? It's a common question which comes. How do you translate Shukr? Thanking Allah. And Hamd, when you say Alhamdulillah, what have you done? You are thanking Allah. Right? When you eat, what do you say? Shukrulillah. What do you say after you what do you say after you eat? Alhamdulillah. What do you say? Why don't you say Shukrulillah? MashaAllah. Ahsan. Because shukr, being grateful, it comes after a favor is done for you. Someone does something to you, so you thank him or her. That is shukr. It is more specific. It is part of hamd. Hamd is more general. Shukr is specific. It is only after a favor is done for you, so you thank someone. That is shukr. Like in hamd again, just like we discussed with madh, Allah deserves hamd even before he did anything for you, or he does anything for you. Why? Because he is the most perfect. And all favors come from him. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ And whatever blessing you have, it is from Allah. And it is enough of a blessing that you have free oxygen you can breathe. If you went up 2% on, oxygen is what? 21.7% of the atmosphere, right? Of the air you breathe, 21.7. If you went up 2%, what will happen? Huh? What will happen? You'll get light-headed, You'll start to bleed. You'll die. Because there's too much oxygen intake. You can't take that. You as a human being. If you went down 2%, what will happen? You'll asphyxiate. You'll die. There's no oxygen for you. That's when you go up on a mountain or hill. There's no oxygen. Allah made it perfect for you. But we overlook these things. You know, We don't even think. 
It's simple, but it's not so simple. Your, our lives depend on that. Our lives on this world depend on that. Can you imagine that? Isn't that enough for us to think Allah, Ikhwani? Huh? I'm asking, isn't that enough? That we should be thankful to Allah? The law of gravity, or the gravitational force, which, which makes us walk on this earth, and wherever you put up, it goes down. Imagine there was no gravitational force on this earth. How would you come to the masjid, the most important thing? On a flying saucer? How would we plant a food which we need to survive as human beings? How would we build our houses? We overlook these things, but they're so essential to our lives. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions so many times in the Quran. The earth, the earth, we made it flat for you. It's not flat like this, but it was madadna meaning we made it easy for you to do whatever you want. These are favors of Allah. This is just this is just a tiny bit of Allah's favors which should make us say Alhamdulillah. All perfect praise belongs to Him. And the greatest favor is this favor Allah is praising himself with in this ayah. That he sent down this book. Alhamdulillah, Khwani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he opened the greatest surah of the greatest book, the Quran, with hamd. Right or wrong? What is that? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. If you want to know how great this word is, Allah opened the greatest surah. By praising himself, he said, Alhamdulillah, all the perfect praise is for Allah. Who is he? Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of everything that exists. Who is he? Maliki Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, the most merciful, the one who's merciful to the believers. Maliki Yomiddin, the king of that day. He deserves to be praised because of that. Because he's Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Why? Because he's Maliki Yomiddin. Allah opened six great surahs of the Quran with Alhamd. Surah Al-Fatiha. The next one is Surah Al-An'am. Which says, Bismillah rahman rahim Listen to how Allah praises himself for. Allah praises himself for the great things he does. So Allah praised himself in Al-Fatiha for what? That he is Rabbil Alameen. He is the Lord of everything. Ikhwani, when you read Al-Fatiha, when you read that first verse, you're supposed to check. Trust me, you're supposed to be filled with fear that I am standing in front of who? The one who deserves the most praise, the most perfect, and he's the Lord of everything. Compare yourself to everything. What are you, me and you? Who are, who are we? Nothing, nobodies. That is why you start your salah with that, to know how great he is. Surah Al-An'am, Allah says, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi khalaqa al-samawati wal-ard, wa ja'ala al-dhulumati wal-nur, thumma al-ladhina kafaru bi rabbihim ya'adilun. All perfect praise belongs to Allah who did what? He created the heavens and the earth. Maybe we haven't thought of this earth. And that is why we say to the atheist and those who deny God, Think of this earth. You think this is random? It's random that oxygen turned out to be 21.7%? That's random? It's random that the sun happened to be this much farther from the earth? Imagine the sun came just two kilometers, five kilometers closer to the earth. There will be no earth. Allah praises himself, he created the heavens and the earth. This earth today, which we live on and have been living on for such a long time, with all the technology we have, we haven't even discovered 10% of it. Not even 10% of it. We don't know. Can you imagine how it is created? You go to some place, you say, Subhanallah, look at the beautiful scenery. Huh? 
Who created the random? How can it be random? And you know something, I have to say this. Because most of us, we are very patriotic to our countries. Something I discover. Every country in this world, there's something beautiful. There's no country in the world where you want to go somewhere which will be dazzling and say, Allahu Akbar, look at that. I know you have Niagara Falls, you know, and more than that. It's a lot of beautiful things to see in this country. Allah praises himself for that. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to think and say, Allahu Akbar. After that, we have Surah Al-Kahf. Allah praises himself by beginning that Surah about that because he revealed the Quran. After that, you have what? Surah Al-Saba. Where Allah says, Alhamdulillah, alladhi lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. All perfect praise belongs to Allah. Who is he? Whatever is in the earth belongs to him. Whatever is in the heavens belongs to him. Allahu Akbar. I want you to listen to me and think, Ikhwan. Most of us, if not all of us, today, if you just got a few million dollars, just a few million dollars, you would delete most of the numbers you have. You would move out to another city so people don't know you. You will treat people differently. Am I right or wrong? That's human nature, right? If you're not proper Muslim, that's what you do, right or wrong? You have the kibr because of the dollars you have or because of the position you have huh inna al-insana la yatgha an ra'ahu istaghna the human being he passes the limits because when he thinks himself i'm i'm more than enough i don't need these people right allah he says this a lot of times ikhwan we need to contemplate on the quran allah says to him belongs the heavens and the earth can you imagine that it is his. Everything you know, it's his. It's his. That is why Allah is Al Ghani. The real rich one is only Allah. Subhanallah. Then the next surah is Surah to Fatir. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi Fatir is Samawatu al Arb. Ja'il il Malaika. Rusulan ulu ajnihatin mathna thulatha ruba'a yazidu fi khalqihi ma yasha. Allah praises himself. He says, all perfect praise belongs to Allah. The one who originated the heavens and the earth. He did not just create them. He originated them. No one could have think, could have thought, sorry, of making something like this. And we say the earth and the heavens, it means everything. All those planets which we still continue to discover. He originated that. And then he says, he praised himself for what? The one who made angels to be messengers between himself and the prophets. Ulu ajniha, those angels, they have wings. Some of them have two wings, some of them have three, some of them have four. And then Allah says, Yazidu fi khalqihi ma yasha, and he increases of his creatures wherever he wants. That is Jibreel alayhi salam. He has 700 wings. If he did this, he covers the horizon of the earth. That is how big Jibril is. Doesn't he deserve to be praised, the one who can create a creature? If that is how big Jibril is and powerful, what about Allah, the one who created Jibril? The next surah, which Allah starts with Alhamd, is what? Those five or six? So this is the meaning of Hamdi, Ikhwan. And if you want to know how important Hamdi is, in the Salah, you cannot pray without doing the Hamd of Allah. After you say, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Allah, he hears and responds to the one who hamidahu, the one who praises him. That is what you say when you get up. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Allah he hears and responses to and responds to the one who praises him. Hamida. 
The Arabic is Hamidahu. But because you end there, you stop there, you say Hamidah. And then you say what? Now you praise Allah. You say Rabbana walakal hamd. That's the simplest one. Oh Allah, Rabbana, oh our Lord, lakal hamd. All the praises for you. Or even greater than that, you say Alham, oh Rabbana walakal hamd. Oh Allah, to you belongs the praise. Look how much praise Allah uh, deserves. Mil as samawat. Praise which can fill all the heavens. Wamil al ard. And praise which will fill the whole earth. Wamil ama bainahuma. And everything between the earth and the heavens. All that should be filled with your praise. Wamil ama shi'ta min shayin ba'd. And to fill anything you want after that. Allahu Akbar. That is how much praise Allah deserves. Can we do that? Can we praise Allah filling the whole earth with praise? But that's what he deserves. Alhamd of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he says, Afdalul dhikr, the best dhikr is la ilaha illallah. Listen to this hadith. And the best dua is what? Alhamdulillah. How many of you have heard of this hadith before? This hadith is in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed. It's an authentic hadith. The best dhikr is la ilaha illallah. And the best dua is alhamdulillah. Now someone may ask, how is alhamdulillah dua? Right? How is it dua? Isn't alhamdulillah also dhikr? Alhamdulillah is dhikr and dua. You know why alhamdulillah is the best dua? Listen to me. Because when you say alhamdulillah, now today you have known the meaning of alhamdulillah. When you say alhamdulillah, it means, oh Allah, to you belongs all the perfect praise. To you belongs all the perfect thanks for everything comes from you. When you say that, Allah gives you everything you want. Because now you don't have to ask Allah. You have reached the point where Allah wants you to reach. To understand. To understand what? That Allah is your Lord. Number one. And number two, that everything belongs to Him. And number three, He is the most perfect one. When you praise Allah and worship Him, Allah gives you whatever you want. That's why it's the best dua. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi says, listen to the importance of hamd. It's been a long time coming, I've wanted to speak about this issue or this topic. Now today we'll speak about it because it's very important, ikhwan. Our Islam it has to be the Islam which is rooted in our hearts to understand Islam. Not to say these things and to pray every day as mundane things. We just routine things, we just repeat, we don't know what we're doing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ana Sayyid waladu Adam yawm al I am the leader and the best of all of the human beings, the children of Adam on the day of judgment. Wa fi yadi, and in my hand on that day, liwa al hamd, I will have the banner, the flag of hamd. And every prophet and every believer will be following me under that banner. Because everybody will be with those whom they used to worship and follow. The kuffar will be another side, the munafiqun another side. Those who used to worship Allah, those will be under the banner of what? The banner of Alhamd. The people used to be thankful to Allah. And used to praise Him properly. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Alhamdun, those who, people who always say Alhamdulillah, Those are the best people. Those are the best people. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when something good used to happen to him, he will say, Alhamdulillah, which means what? All the perfect praise and thanks belongs to Allah. 
الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات the one by him all the good things are completed and when something bad used to happen he used to say what alhamdulillah ala kulli hal so the muslim is always upon what hamd hamd always not just thanking allah ikhwan this is what we have to know when you say alhamd you're not just thanking allah alhamd islamically in the sharia is to do what to praise allah by glorifying him and loving him this is the part we are missing alhamdulillah it is to thank and praise allah with what by glorifying Allah and loving Him. It has to be through that. That is Hamd. When you say Alhamdulillah, it should mean Alhamdulillah that Allah, Ya Rabb, you are the most great. You are the one I'm supposed to love more than anything and anyone. That is the meaning of Alhamdulillah. And that is the Alhamdulillah which will take you far. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alhamdulillah tamla ul mizan. Alhamdulillah, it will fill your scales on the day of judgment. The scales of good deeds and bad deeds, Alhamdulillah fills your scales. So Allah praises Himself, Ya Khwani, why? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna Allah yuhibbu al hamd, wa lithalika hamida nafsa. He says, Allah, he loves to be praised. That is why he praised himself. To teach us to do that. To teach us to do that. So Allah praises himself here, Ikhwani. Before that, there's another hadith I have to mention. And this is the great hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, ما من ما من عبد أعطاه الله نعمة فحمد الله عليه إلا كان ما أعطى خير ممن أخ مما أخذ أي ما أعطى الحمد خير مما أخذ النعم. He says the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم there's no one whom Allah gives him a blessing a favor. And he says, Alhamdulillah, except that whatever he gave, meaning whatever he said of Alhamdulillah, is better than the favor he was given. So Allah gave you a job, you're earning 120,000 a year. When you say Alhamdulillah once for that, that Alhamdulillah is better than Allah giving you $120,000. Why? Because now we have realized who is your Lord. Now we have realized how great this Lord is. Now you are thanking Him. And when you do that, what does Allah do for you? Allah gives you more. That is why Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he said, or one of the tabi'in, he said, I don't know which is greater. That Allah gives me more by I praising Him, or by him giving me the tawfiq to praise him. That Allah gives you a favor. All these favors we have. So we thank Allah. That thanking of Allah is a great ibadah. This is what we're discussing. Who gave you the facilitation of doing that great ibadah of thanking Allah? Who? It is Allah. So which is greater? When you do that, Allah gives you more. He said, I don't know which is greater. That he gives me more or he makes me thank him for him to give me more. Allah says, And if you are to count the favors of Allah, you cannot enumerate them. That is how great Alhamd is, ya khwan. And if you only learnt this today, this is enough. This is enough. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he praises himself with hamd a lot in the Quran. And Allah, he brings it with his tawheed. Allah, he says, وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدَ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ 
ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الله أكبر and say الحمد لله that is the end of سورة الإسراء يا إخوان pay attention you want to learn the Quran this is how you learn the Quran سورة الإسراء when it ends that's how it ends then this سورة starts like that الحمد لله سورة الإسراء the سورة before الكهف how does it end وقل الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا and say all perfect praise belongs to Allah who never who never took a son or a child. Allah mentions this again in the beginning of Kahf. ولم يكن له ولي من الذل هذا معتوف meaning it says what? قل الحمد لله الذي لم يكن له ولي من الذل all perfect praise belongs to Allah who doesn't have a child and he does not take ولي a friend because Allah needs a friend لا Allah does not need a friend. That's a favor from him. And then Allah begins this surah with Alhamdulillah again. And Allah says in another part of the Quran, وَهُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ And He is Allah who there's no true God except Him. وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي الْأُولَى وَالْآخِرَةِ And to Him then belongs the hamd in the beginning and in the end. Allahu Akbar. And the hamd is the dua, like we said, the best dua, not just for us, is the dua of Jannah. The last thing the people of Jannah will ever say, which they continue to say is, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. When they just enter Jannah, they'll say what? وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَ لِهَادَ They'll say, Alhamdulillah, the one who guided us and now we are here in Jannah. That is how great Hamd is. And that is why the greatest words you can ever say are for. The most beloved words to Allah. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. And the best dhikr you can say, Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi. When you combine those two, Subhanallah and wa bihamdihi, that is Hamd then you have said the greatest dhikr. And that is the dhikr Allah chose for the malaika, his angels. There's no greater dhikr than that. This is Hamdi Ikhwani. And that is why I spent most time on this today. Let it come from the heart with a full understanding next time we say it. Let it come from the heart that you're actually praising Allah and thanking him. You're realizing Allah's greatness. If you want to know how great this is, Ikhwan, the simple dua after eating. How many times you eat a day? Once, twice, thrice? Maybe a lot. The Prophet وسلم, he says, no one eats anything. And then he says what? Alhamdulillah alladhi atu'amani hadha wa razaqanihi min ghayri hawlin minni wa laquwati. Except that all of your previous sins are forgiven. Can you imagine? Such a simple dhikr and dua. All of your previous sins are forgiven. It's because of the greatness of it. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah yuhibbu. Ida akala abduhu akala an yahmada. Allah loves that when you eat something, you praise Him and thank Him. When you wear clothes, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi kasani hadha. Allahu Akbar. Hamd. Hamd. Make sure you are always someone who praises Allah with hamd. So that you'll be under the banner of hamd. The banner which will be held by the greatest Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The banner which all the other prophets will follow, that flag and that banner. And this is the meaning of Allah's name, Al-Hamid. So Allah here, He praises Himself, Ya Khwani. Alhamdulillah, all the perfect praise. And you say that like we say, all the perfect praise, we praise Him because we love Him and He's great. And all the favors are from Him. Lillahi belongs to Allah. Why? Alladhi he is the one. Anzala ala abdihi al-kitab. He revealed to his abd Muhammad. 
Al-Kitab, the book. Al-Kitab here is which book? Huh? The Quran, this Quran. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجًا Abd, I told you, pay attention to this word because Allah, he called Khadr Abd. Huh? Khadr is a great slave of Allah. In English, you translate as slave. You can say servant. But you have to, be, you have to know. Ubudiyya, the concept of Ubudiyya where this name comes, Abd. It is the greatest station you as a human being can reach. That is where Allah, he praises himself by revealing the greatest book. He did not say to Muhammad or to his Rasul or to his Nabi. He said to who? Abd, to his greatest slave. Why? Because Ubudiyya is what Allah created us for, to worship him. Once you reach that status, then you are up there. And that is why the previous surah again, Surah Al-Isra, Allah, he glorified himself for doing something great, which is to do what? Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi. Allah, he took his abd, Muhammad, from Makkah uh, to Jerusalem to up to the seventh heaven. Allah called him abd in the highest position. Allah called him abd in the highest and the greatest book. Ubudiyya is why we are Muslims. Ubudiyya is why we worship. Ubudiyya is why we praise Allah. Ubudiyya is why we stay away from the haram. So we can become real ibad of Allah. Real ibad. That you're real servant of Allah. Meaning, Ubudiyya in Arabic, it means to lower yourself and to humble yourself. That is why the servant is called Abd. Why? Because he's humbling himself and he's lower to his owner or his master. We are ibad of Allah. The more you humble yourself to Allah by worshipping him, the higher Allah takes you. That is why Allah, he called almost all his prophets abd in his book. Allah says about Musa, after saying about Muhammad alayhi salam, eh? Subhanallah asra bi abdi, Allah says what? About Musa, what does Allah say about Musa? إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا وَذْكُرْ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا Allah mentions a lot. Remember our ibad, Ibrahim and Ishaq and Zakaria and Ilyas and all those great ones. Be a real abd of Allah and that is by humbling yourself, lowering yourself to Allah by worshipping him and Allah raises you up. No one humbles himself to Allah except that Allah raises you up. So we will stop here for today, Khani, because Aisha has caught up with us. And we will continue next week, of course, inshallah. For those of you who are in a hurry, I'm sorry, this is not the place to be in a hurry. This is not one of those places who come and run Suratul Kahf in double weekend seminar, then you get a certificate. You learn Suratul Kahf in two, in two days. No. We don't do that here. We learn proper knowledge. If it'll take us a year, it'll take us a year. If it takes us four days, it'll take us four days. But we make sure every point we need, I will serve you with that. That's my duty. Of course, next week also we start at Maghrib. We'll start at Maghrib until Maghrib comes at 7. We don't want to start at 7 right now because in the next week or so, Maghrib will be like 7.20, 7.30. So we'll have to break quickly. So we'll start at Maghrib until Maghrib comes at 7. Then we start our halakha as usual at, at 7. And of course, there's the other book we'll also be reading about the disciplining of the soul, which we started last week. Adab al-Nufus of Imam al-Ajurri. I uh, will be reading that insha'Allah. Um, do you have any questions on what we discussed only? Questions on what we discussed? Yes, Akhi.
Athana, it comes with the same meaning as to praise. Athana, it comes as the same meaning of praising. But Athana, it takes the same meaning as Madh, Islamically now. You only do Thana on someone when he does something good, or has something good. Now, even though for Allah also a thana is rightful. Because in the hadith uh, uh, Qudsi, the Prophet Sallallahu said, when one of you, he reads Al-Fatiha, you say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah says what? Hamidani Abdi, my slave has done the hamd. You know when you read the Fatiha in the Salah, you're speaking to Allah. That is why from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu you stop at every ayah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, Hamidani Abdi. When you say, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah says what? Athna Aliya Abdi. In English, you say praise again. Blame the English language. We have not come there. We did not discuss Khadr yet. Khadr alayhi salam, is he a prophet? No, he's not a prophet. He's just a, from the righteous slaves of Allah. Even though there's some who said he's a prophet, Allahu A'lam. When we discuss lowering ourselves in front of Allah, we're also supposed to lower ourselves in front of other people. There's a difference. When we say lowering yourself and humbling yourself towards Allah, you humble yourself towards Allah and you lower yourself towards Allah and you submit yourself to Allah, that is complete submission. Submission which is based on love and glorifying Allah. That is worship. This is worship. Humbling yourself towards someone uh, or submitting yourself to them is not worship. It's a good character. If you're doing it for Allah, then you get rewards, of course. It's like the concept of love. Loving Allah is a must. It is the soul of being a real Muslim. Loving Allah. You have to love Allah more than anyone, more than anything else. This is worship. In fact, if you give this same love, the love of worship, and this is the lo love is the one which makes you submit to Allah and humble yourself to Allah. And this is, uh, I have to mention this now. We can never understand the hamd of Allah ikhwani, unless we know Allah. When we study Allah's names and attributes, then you will know the greatness of hamd, why Allah deserves all this perfect praise. That is the key. Love of Allah, it makes you submit to Him. It makes you humble yourself to Him. It makes you worship Him. That's the meaning of worship. Now this love, the love of worship, it is only for Allah. Then you have natural love. You love your parents. You love your children. This is not a love of worship, meaning you don't sub... It's not a love which makes you submit yourself to them. You understand? Absolutely and unconditionally, no. It is a natural love. If this love in any way contradicts with the greater love, the love of worship, then you leave this. Because now it is interfering into the, the love which is only for, for Allah. Now. Anybody else has a question? Okay. Yes. Sorry? The question you have is for last week's haq. You'll ask in private, inshallah. Okay? Okay. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadan la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka atubu ilayka.